Gen 1 is good for broken, mindless fun only. If it hadn't been first, nobody would care about it anymore. Gen 2 also improved in every possible way on Gen 1's issues and shortcomings and get little or nothing care. So I definitely 100% agree with this first take. This is actually my exact take on Gen 1. Pretty much one of the reasons I enjoyed Blue Kaiser as much as I did was fiddling with all the like stupid broken Gen 1 mechanics. That was some of the most fun. Um, I think Kanto is an incredibly dumb map. Um, it's a square with no biomes and straight routes. It's just really dumb. And the way you traverse the map is also pretty stupid. I do think Gen 2 has a lot of really glaring issues as well, though. And Gen 2 is, like, super overhyped. Gen 2 gets so, so much hype, right? So I think that the second part here... I, I do think... Gen 2 did improve a lot on Gen 1's shortcomings, though. It's true. But yeah, obviously Gen 1, you, you can kind of forgive Gen 1 because it was the first game in the series. But at the same time, you also have to remember that like, if I'm judging a, a generation by like, I'm always going to judge it by how much fun do I have playing it, right? And I have the least fun playing Gen 1. Gen 2 gets so much hype because you can play both regions. Yeah, but the problem is that the second region is shit. I'd rather have a much more fleshed out, f fleshed out Johto that actually works as a region on its own and doesn't fucking get you like level fucking f level fucking 40s on the like fucking elite four it's just not good <laughs> pikachu isn't a reliable pokemon it's a decent filler i don't even know if it's a decent filler i think it's just i mean raichu can be okay just because I, I always speak from a nuzlocke perspective on this but raichu is generally pretty okay because electric types are usually pretty good Ooh, here we go. Electric types are bad. Some have uninspiring designs and names. They're pretty lame offensively. Pokemon like Jolteon Zapdos, for example, look really dull, just being a little electricity instead of something more creative. And it's only strong against flying in water. This, this, my friends, is what we call a garbage take. A garbage take from someone who doesn't play the game, okay? Or at least not in any challenging sense, all right? So he says it's only good against flying in water while completely ignoring the fact that those are probably the most, the two most common types that you encounter in any like playthrough or Nuzlocke or anything, first of all. Second of all, electric types only have one weakness in ground moves, which is really easy to counter by flying types. So defensively, it's amazing. It's a really good offensive type and you can cover the things that resist really easily with other moves, right? Some of the electric type designs are uninspired. I don't particularly care for Jolteon. I think Zapdos is pretty cool though, especially because Zapdos is more of like a defensive mod, which I really like. I usually really like defensive um, legendaries and pseudo legendaries. Also, electric types have a lot of amazing designs. Look at Magneton, look at Ampharos. Ampharos is a really cool design, right? You have stuff like Luxray, which is super badass. Electivire, I think, is really cool. Like, there's so much you can do with electric types, and I feel like a lot of it has been done. Like, a lot of cool things has, have come out of, like, the electric type Pokemon. There's so many cool designs in the electric types. Zekrom is fucking badass. Rodom is really amazing, yeah. Raikou, Raikou is fucking, fucking awesome. This is a super shit take. Lantern's really cool, yeah. I like the design of the Gen 8's male protagonist. I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't know if anyone disagrees with that. Emerald's my favorite game. Gas stars are the best. Boring. Pokemon is boring and formulaic since Gen 3. All right, so let's talk about that, right? So I think I, we can all definitely agree with the second one, okay? Pokemon is probably one of the most formulaic game series ever to have existed, right? Ever to have existed. I don't think there's a lot of fans, a lot of series of games that are as formulaic as Pokemon. Gen 7 kind of broke the formula. A little bit, but not even that much. The fact that we considered Gen 7 to break the fo formula of Pokemon says a lot about how, how formulaic the series really has gotten, right? Or it has really been. I wouldn't even say it's been formulaic since Gen 3. I would say the things that are truly formulaic and have always stayed true to form has been, have been around since Gen 1, right? We've, we've made changes to the battle system. Okay, maybe Call of Duty is a little bit more formulaic. I will give you that. Okay, Call of Duty probably. Or like probably FIFA or some shit like that, right? But th those fucking ga those fucking games get a new game every 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 like year. <laughs> People play for it. It's really dumb. Um but like yeah, the the battle system in Pokémon is like it has gotten like significant tweaks, but at its core, the battle system of Pokémon has stayed pretty much exactly the same for 20 years, right? The way that you progress through the map, the way that you interact with the overworld, the way you catch Pokémon, the way you go the way you usually go through the story all this has stayed the same since pretty much gen 1 right now remember we can make these statements we can make these observations right without making normative statements about it right so the, the pokemon being formulaic doesn't mean it's bad right if a formula is good and works you can you can like repeat it over and over and still do something good right 
you don't need certain things to be like super innovative every time they come out. Sure, playing an innovative game is awesome, but if a formula really works, then you don't really have an obligation to change it, especially as a company uh, if you want to make money, right? But speaking more from from a consumer standpoint, we all love Pokemon games. We all still play Pokemon games. We all still buy Pokemon games, and we like them because they're awesome. Because the Pokemon formula in of itself, despite it being so formula, like, does give you a lot of freedom when playing through the game. Every playthrough can be a little bit different. That's why we can do challenges like Nuzlocke's and Solar Runs. And that's why everyone has like their own little story, right? Maybe sometimes in just innovating the amount of like new Pokemon in the game, new moves and everything does kind of give us a better understand or like g give us some innovation, but maybe that's all the innovation we need because maybe the formula is pretty good. <laughs> all right, here's a take for me. The grinding and XP difference in most Pokemon games is annoying. This guy has probably not even played Blue Kaizo, dude. What a fucking... Can we get some Omega Lols in chat for this fucking noob? <laughs> yeah, he probably hasn't even played the Ron X I've played. I have to grind for three hours straight. This guy doesn't know the struggle. This guy doesn't even know the struggle. What a fucking noob. But he hasn't even bloody platinum. Yeah. Gen 4 split was huge. Absolutely, yeah. But it, it the, the the battle system is still trade stay like the exact same at its core. All right, I think we can all agree with that. I really wish they would bring back some of the old goofy Gen 1 models for Pokemon, like Golbat, because a lot of Pokemon just don't look very interesting. I don't agree. I actually think that character design is one of the top leading uh, reasons why Pokemon is so good. Pokemon usually, despite me shitting on a lot of Pokemon designs, Almost every single Pokemon design has something interesting and cool about it. Their coloring is usually really interesting. The way that they're designed, their proportions are cool. They have a lot of personality. Like, you can you can see this by, like, looking at Pokemon knockoffs and how boring a lot of the designs there are. Like, go look at fucking Monster Rancher or some shit, right? Like, Pokemon designs are really great. Even some Digimon designs really fucking suck compa compared to Pokemon. Pokemon designs are super, super, super iconic. And it's part of the reason that I think Pokemon is really successful. I think the reason why a lot of the Gen 1 sprites were as goofy as they were, why these were popular, is that you didn't have a lot of room to, to represent the Pokemon with like so little pixels. So sometimes making it look extremely goofy and um, exaggerating those um, exaggerating those things can, can, can allow you to give that Pokemon more of a personality than you would if you just like kind of kept it at like nothing, right? So it makes them more memorable. But, but now that we have more um, kind of more freedom to do what we want with like the colors, um, remember, like on the on red and blue, you couldn't even give the Pokemon colors, right? So um, you have to do something else to give them like a certain personality and make them stand out, right? Now we don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to make them like look goofy and stupid. Some Pokemon can just look badass, right? And to be fair, we also see some pretty goofy designs now and then, right? I mean, just look at a lone Executor, right? We don't need like it's arguably more goofy than any Golbat sprite you could ever think of, right? Gen three isn't very good. We talked about that. Gen six is boring. We talked about that. Just Six was one of the best generations ever. I guess there's two types of people in the world, huh? This Pokemon was terrible and the most annoying. I don't think I agree with that. I think Shaman and Shaman Sky are uh, are pretty cool. They're pretty different takes on legendaries. We've never seen a legendary quite like that. Um, and I think it's cool as fuck. And Shaman, I mean like Shaman Sky is pretty annoying to play against in competitive because it's a ring grace bullshit, right? But I do think it's a cool Pokemon that looks pretty badass. This is all just Gen, Gen X is Y. I don't really care about these. I think we've talked about like pretty much my, my take on every single generation so far, right? People who already hate Sword and Shield, people who passionately already hate on Sword and Shield, based on like three plus, roughly three minutes of footage and hasn't even come out yet, need to sit in the electric chair. Listen, maybe I won't call for the death penalty, but I do think it's a little bit early to, to judge, you know? But to be fair, it's also early enough to say that you don't like certain things, right? Like, I think it's early enough to point out that, hey, it looks like this game is going to be pretty formulaic again. We're getting another fire, water, grass starter. We're probably getting gems again. We're probably just going to get a region that we go through, blah, 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 right? In the end, really, um, there is, I think there is legitimate complaints to be had from people that are looking like for more innovation or something, or for people that hope that the graphics style would be way cooler and not just look like a slight upgrade on the 3DS graphics. But I, I do think some people go a little bit overboard with the hate. Have to be honest, I don't like Mega Evolutions, neither the concept nor how any of them look. Um, I think the concept is incredibly awesome. I think the concept is cool as fuck, and it's something that I've been wanting in Pokemon since I was a little kid. But I do think execution-wise, sometimes they did go a little bit overboard with the Mega Evolution. Some of them were way too OP, some of them looked ridiculous, some of them were unnecessary. I think in general, though, I do like the concept, and I wish they expanded on it more. My take on Gen 5, I think, is the best generation. Probably. Sun and Moon art style is pretty cool. I agree with this. The Sun and Moon anime is the absolute best Pokemon anime that's ever been. Ash needs to stop and let a new protagonist like, take control of the show. You know, I'm actually surprised this has never happened before. I, I really wonder why we're still sticking with Ash after 20 years. It seems to get pretty boring, I feel like. I don't know. 
would prefer the gem system still, but obviously there isn't much post-game. Yeah, I don't know. Also, what's up, Purple Cliff? Good to see you. 